She's got a food for the moon. <laughs> Imagine getting ready for work one day. You've already had a pretty hectic morning. You had to leave the house late because your babysitter canceled, you couldn't find your keys, and now you're stuck in traffic. After 15 minutes of sitting and waiting, you speed out of there when you come across an accident between two cars. You pull over to check it out. You discover that three people have made it out of the accident with just a few bumps and bruises, but there's one per person who's unconscious next to the car. The others tell you that they're unsure of what to do with an unconscious person. Would you know what to do, or would you stand helplessly on the side like the rest of them? This scenario is just one scenario when learning CPR could come in handy. This is why today I'm going to teach you how to properly give CPR. Your first step when giving CPR is to always check your surroundings. If you were in the accident, you should check yourself for any serious injuries before helping others. You should also check your surroundings to make sure that the area is safe for you to be in before you try to help others. After checking your surroundings, you should make sure that CPR is the right procedure for your patient. If your patient is conscious and seems to be choking on something, or if your patient is unconscious but you know that he or she has choked on something, you should perform a different procedure than CPR. But if your patient is unconscious, seem not to be breathing, or but you know that he or she hasn't choked on anything, that is when you should perform CPR. After determining that CPR is the right procedure, you should start out with giving 30 chest compressions. Your chest compression should be hard and fast, with the palm of your hand in the middle of their chest at their sternum. Your chest compression should be at least two inches deep and at least 100 compressions per minute. An example of these chest compressions would look like this. You should make sure that your patient is on a firm, flat surface when giving your compressions to make sure that there's no unnecessary injuries when doing your compressions. After giving 30 chest compressions, your next step is to give two rescue breaths. First, you will tilt the head back and lift the chin. Next, you're going to pinch the nose and create a seal over the patient's mouth. If you are in lifeguard or in EMS, you may be required to wear a mask. This mask might stop any distribution of diseases from you to the patient or from the patient to you. An example of this rescue breath would look like this. After you have lifted the chin, you should blow for about one second, making sure that the patient's chest clearly rises like I did. If the patient's chest does not rise, it could mean that the patient isn't getting any air and you may have to retilt the head and give another rescue breath. It could also mean that the patient's airway might be obstructed by something, and in that case you would give the procedure for unconscious choking instead. You should continue with this cycle and not stop unless you're in one of these situations. You've discovered that the patient is clearly breathing on his own, an EMS is around to help, or if an AED is around and ready to use. You should also stop performing CPR if the area becomes unsafe for you to be in, or if you become too exhausted or tired to continue. These few simple steps may not seem very difficult, but here are a few tips to remember. In a situation where CPR may be needed, the energy in the room may make you feel anxious or stressed. Remember to stay calm when giving CPR because being stressed in a situation like this could make you forget some very crucial steps. Hopefully these few steps can take you from standing helplessly on the side to possibly saving a life.